Hey guys, thank you so much for coming along to my channel. It's always a pleasure to have you here. If this is the first time you are joining me, uh, maybe through Google search or referral, whatever way that you came across to my channel, just know that I'm so excited to have you on my channel. Um, I would highly encourage you, if you if this is your first time here, to click that subscribe button down below and then hit the notification bell so that anytime I release new content, you'll be the first person to get that because I wouldn't want you to uh, miss any of my contents, believe me. It's because of you that I'm here. If you're a returning subscriber, um, I'm going to appreciate you guys for always sharing and liking and commenting, but for people reaching out to me in private and those who are also doing that in the public space. I so much appreciate. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead to click the subscribe button and then the notification bell so that um, this uh, channel is going to be much more visible to a lot of people on uh, out there. And just to put it out there, as always, if you are looking to collaborate with me uh, in terms of maybe you're looking to uh, a mentor or a coach in terms of Scrum and Agile, all you need to do is to reach out. As you can see on top of my screen, um, you will be able to see my information. You can connect with me on my Facebook if you are using Facebook or Meta, as it is called now. Or you can you know, connect on my Instagram, or you can shoot me an email, and together we can build a strong um, team. Okay, right now, um, I wanted to talk to you today about how to facilitate your sprint retrospective in conflicts. Um, I have had this question off and on, so today is going to be more practical. Okay, this is one of the things I do in my Scrum class. People have been asking most of my students, or I've been reading online, how can how can people how can you facilitate your sprint retrospective? By sprint retrospective, we mean the demo, right? How can, um, I mean, the, the, the not the demo, actually. By sprint retrospective, I mean the last event that happens in the Scrum cycle, okay? After the sprint review, you have a sprint demo. Um, how can you facilitate the sprint retrospective, the reflective time for the team in Confluence? Most people use Miro and Mural to facilitate that. Again, there might be other, um, tools you might use, but I find Confluence to be engaging too. Most people haven't discovered how you could facilitate the sprint retrospective in Confluence. So today I'm gonna to show you how you could do that, okay? Sit tight and let me walk you through. To do that, the first thing I'm gonna do is to share my board and then we'll do that together, okay? Um, give me one second here, I'm bringing on my board. All right, here you go. Um, I'm assuming you can see my board. This is a typical Confluence page, what it looks like. Now, I'm gonna make an assumption. One of the assumptions I'm gonna make is that you are familiar with Confluence, right? You know how to create a page in Confluence. You know how to create a space in Confluence, right? The first thing you do in a Confluence is to create a space. Now, when you create a space, the second thing is to create a page. There are other things you could do in Confluence, but for the course of today's content, we're going to limit it to, you know, facilitating a sprint retrospective in Confluence. Now, having known what you know, and having heard me or haven't listened to these assumptions, now let's go over to this button right here. If you have it on your end, all you need to do is to click on this button is gonna come up with this sub, sub uh, menu. Click on the page and allow it to load. One good thing about Confluence is as soon as you create, as soon as an empty page loads, now it pops out on the right hand side of the screen like a template you could import. Now, when that appears, all you need to do is, you see the search, bo search bar right there, Keep your cursor in there and press or type in retrospective. And then you're going to see two templates being visible. Hover your cursor on top of the first one so that you can either take it or go for the second one. For today's content, I'm going to go with the second option. All I need to do is to click, left click on it and let it roll over. Now, 
I have a typical template. Now, am I going to stop here? Absolutely not. Now, first thing I'm going to do is to give it a title, right? So I'm going to say, for example, uh, sprint one retrospective. That is a title. Sorry, um, that, was, that was an error there. That is a title. So that's the first thing I'll do. Now, I'm someone that I like aesthetics, like design. So I'm going to give it a header. I'm going to add a header image, OK? So what I need to do is to click on that. There are tons of options that Confluence has by default. But you need to filter and get the actual uh, header image that you want to, to design your Confluence. Now, I'm going to look at something very reflective of the page I'm looking, I'm trying to create. Let's just say, uh, uh, if I type retrospective and see if there's going to be anything. OK, so it gives us a couple of options. Some of them might be out of conversation, whatever it is. So I'm looking at something that gives me a sense of reflection, right? That's that's a kind of re re reflective moment. Now, looking at this one, these are, I'm assuming this is a couple, and they are just, you know, staring at the water there. I'm just going to choose that. And then, boom, it appears on my page. Now, I need to drag it so that I can make visible the actual parts that I want to make visible. So I'm just going to play around it, right? Again, this is optional. If you don't want to have it on your page, that's nice. But like I said, I like to play with design. So let's just say I'm going to leave it at this and click Apply. And boom, it's applied. I can always change this, right? So if you want to change it, all you need to do is click on it. It's going to bring up this option. Either you remove or reposition or change image, OK? Now, you can either add emoji or add status about your page. That being said, now, the second thing is to give an overview. Overview is like an intro, what this page is about or what this template is about. So I'm going to delete these by default, which have a by default. And then I can write something like, um, this is an opportunity for us to reflect on how the sprint went. What, what went well? What didn't go well? Um, action steps for action steps for improvements. Again, feel free to type in whatever you want. So I'm just gonna put this there as an overview, right? Just to give a sense of what this represents. Okay. That being said, um, the next thing I'm gonna do is to put a date that my team is having this um, event. Again, like I would say, I can write up, you know, do it this way and put a date, right? Uh, which is quite easy. So because I'm making today's content on the 27th of October, 2023, so that's why it's selected by default, okay? So if I don't want to do it that way, I can choose different formats. So I can delete this. Um, I can say whatever day. So today is 20, 27th of October. So I'm going to say October 27th, 2023. Okay. Whatever works for you. Okay. Now, team. What is the name of your team? Right. Let's just say your team is the Sharks. All you need to do is just say. Uh, how do I spell sharks? Okay, let's just say um, the shackles. I'm going to say the shackles. Now, in terms of participants, the number of people that attend, that has attended or that is attending your, your retrospective section. Now, to call out someone's name, all you need to do is to play the at sign, and then you can type their names. So these are fictional names. So I'm just going to select my name. And then I'm going to select um, another one. Is so select Philip. So you just keep doing that. Just as far as those people are already keying on your your projects database or your company's database, their names keep popping out. So as you can see, 
because I'm the owner and the only person on this board, so I have already done that. Now, after you have put all the information, now, what I used to do is to make my board already set up before the retrospective session. And how would I do that? I would go through this process, make it much more okay. Now, what I would do next is to invite my team members, which is basically what happens when you're using Miro, right? So Miro, you create your board and then you send out the link and your team members come to the board and then they can start throwing the ideas. So what I could do or what I do, what I can do or what you could do in your own situation is to type in your team member's name. So type team member's name, you just put the at sign and then you will start typing the names. And then that appears there, you know, just at sign, you call in their names, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Or you can use their email address, right? And then get them to the board. As soon as you do that, they just say, okay, I'm going to type in my name here. Let us say I want to put John Bosco. Now I can decide to add a little bit information here, just optional, and then I can click invite. Boom. That invite will be sent to that participant, and then you will get a message saying page is shared. Now that person will now have access to your board to edit. All right. Now don't be afraid, whoever edits your board you get a notification that somebody has edited your board as of when and what the person did. So your team members are not gonna mess up your board. Now, this is very familiar about start doing, stop doing and keep doing. In other words, um, what is it that you guys wanna do that you have not been doing, right? Like to improve, what is it that you guys uh, have been doing within the sprint that you could stop that has not been very helpful and what is it that you guys are doing that you want to continue to do, right? So you can encourage your team members to start from anywhere and you can time it. So for now, um, let's just say the time is 5 p.m. or maybe 12, 1 p.m. That is when you guys are having this retrospective section, right? You can tell them, guys, let's spend about 10 minutes to throw in the ideas. This is more or less like when you are or uh, if it is a physical environment when your team members are using like a sticky notes, so they use this to put in the ideas. As soon as those ideas has been populated or uh, in this space, then you will spend maybe 10, 15 minutes to um, have a conversation on what those ideas are all about. And then at the end, towards the end, you can decide with your team what you're going to action for the next sprint. And then you guys can put those ideas down here, right? I just say, um, okay, let's just say um, early attendance, attendance to a meeting, that was typo error there, and that's the meeting. And let me, you want, you want somebody to action it, maybe they just say, John Bosco, you're going to action this. Right, so, and then you click enter on your keyboard and then you can type whatever ideas. Um, maybe you guys can say, uh, PRs, PRs to be reviewed and matched by whoever, by dev team, right? And then you can call out a developer, say maybe John Bosco, if John Bosco is a developer so that you guys have action things out, okay? And after the whole thing, you can click publish, and then you're gonna bring out this, just hit publish and wait for it. And then boom, you have your retrospective, right? There you go. And your box looks a little bit much more engaging. One of the good thing about using the Confluence is by following this format is that it's kind of collaborative. Think about it in this way that, um, I'm gonna stop sharing. Think about it in this way that you are, you are in a physical building, depending if you're working in a co-location, right? Your team members are all gonna grab their sticky notes and then they're gonna to go to the board and keep trying those ideas. Whether you're working in a co-location or whether you are working in a remote setting, using Confluence to conduct your sprint retrospective be much more engaging all right if you haven't tried this please i'm going to encourage you to try it 
if you're working in an environment, you are new to Scrum or you're new to organization, and they are kind of asking what tool would they use in order to facilitate uh, your sprint retrospective, believe me, if you want to try the conference, um, they might like it. I have tried it and I'm continuing to use it, and my team members are happy that we are using that. Again, it's a matter of choice. People use Mural or Miro, whatever your choice is. I find Confluence quite so engaging and it's quite so easy. You don't need to trans um, export information from your Miro or Mural to your Confluence directly. That's one good thing about it. You document information and you can easily, easily track it. All right. Again, I'm not trying to give us a walkthrough on Confluence. My main idea here is to explain and give you a walkthrough on how you can use Confluence to facilitate your sprint retrospective. Okay. I'm going to stop here for today. This is a part one. Perhaps um, based on requests, I can make more video on how you can use Confluence to do other meetings. Now, how have you used the Confluence to facilitate your meetings? If you haven't done that, try this and let me know what, you, what your thoughts. You can even create a, you know, as a free version of Confluence. You don't need to pay any money for it. Free version for it and then you can get this done, okay? And if you have done this in the past, how did your team react or respond? How do you find it engaging, distracting? What are your thoughts? I wanna know that in the comment section, okay? Thank you, you're so amazing. Spending these few minutes with me and uh, working with me, being patient is amazing. I, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for spending these few minutes with me. I am hoping that I will continue to deliver valuable videos and contents for your uh, consumption and that is going to help you to continue to deliver value to your team, to your organization. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, you are so amazing. Please don't forget to subscribe on my YouTube page here. Don't forget to click the notification bell. Help me to share this so that others will continue to learn and will continue to build an active community of practice. In the meantime, I hope you stay well. Bye for now.